Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials. All the info, none of the fluff, so let's get to it. Today I want to talk to you about some advanced ways of transposing. Transposing isn't always as simple as just dragging notes up and down, right? That's the simplest way of transposing and it's called direct transposing in the kind of music nerd cycles. So I can always select a melody or a chord progression or whatever and I can use numpad 8 or numpad 2 to move it up and down. But today I wanted to show you a more advanced window and that's accessible by pressing the letter T and that opens this window transpose MIDI if you haven't changed it by default. If you have, it's just the command transpose notes which you can, you know, if you wanna reassign T, you can put that baby up in the MIDI toolbar. So anyway, I got a melody here, you may recognize it. Let's hear it. And I wrote it in C major. I think in reality it's in A major. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, let's see what we can do to this using the transpose menu. So I'm going to select all these notes and I'm going to press T. And here I can move it up or down a few semitones. And that's still kind of direct transposing. But as you can see, I can also transpose it from one scale to another. So I can take this kind of nice, happy, peppy Super Mario theme. And if I then transpose it to the scale of, let's do harmonic minor. Now it will have a very different feel to it. So let's Let's listen to that. Right, so now it's in minor and it has a very different feel. The only caveat for this is for this to work, you need to set this from scale yourself. You need to know what your melody or chord progression is written in. If you don't know your scales and don't know the name of scales and keys and stuff, there is one thing you can do and that is this action. It's called Mordi Ah Music Search Selected Notes in Scale Finder. And if I run this command, it would actually open a web page. And on this web page, it will tell me what the scale is. And actually in this case, it did not find the scale that we were looking for because there's a non-chord tone in this melody right here. This B flat note, that's actually not in the scale. It's just a passing note to kind of like funkify the scale a little bit. So what I can do is select those notes, then command and right drag to have all the notes except those notes selected. Now, if I run this action, well, it'll tell me that I'm in C major. Another thing you can do, you can transpose it up the way you do normally, but have it snap to scale. So what that does is that it only goes up in scale degrees. So, you know, if I, if I go snap, have to scale and then I go up two semitones. Now we're still within the key of C major, but we've kind of changed the mode a little bit. kind of loosely in Phrygian. So this is a good way of like experimenting with your melodies and stuff like that, you know, like you get kind of like one motif going and then you can change it in a bunch of different ways. For example, you know, we got this little motif here. We got the lick here. You know, I can duplicate it. And let's, you know, let's snap this to scale. Let's go to something weird. Let's go to like D sharp, a minor, and then let's go up three semitones. Let's actually put this here. So the same thing works with chords as well, however, not too, too well. So I got a chord progression here. It's very simple. It's an F major, G major, A minor. Again, I know my chords. If you don't know your chords, there is another command called Mordi, search selected notes in chord finder. And again, if you hit that, it tells you it's notes and stuff like that. And you know, right now it's only finding one possible answer. If your chords are a little complicated, it'll probably give you multiple results. So again, that's another story. So if I want to transpose this, again, I know this to be an F major chord. So let's try it. I can keep it on major or I can use the major triad and then let's change this to an F dominant seven. And as you can see, nothing happens. So with chords, there is a little bit of limitation on this system because, you know, anybody with a little bit of knowledge of chords and scales would easily surmise that if I take this top F, you know, I got an F on the bottom and then F is doubled. And if I put it in E flat, it'll be a F dominant seven. This is just a great tool for experimenting with melodies, creating any kind of like randomness. I really like writing random music. What happens if I take all these chords and I say the scale of this is A minor, which it is, and then change them to the key of F sharp harmonic minor. I don't know what's gonna happen. Let's check it out. Ooh. Oh. Eh. Ooh, I kind of like these three chords, you know, they're kind of weird chords. So this is a super interesting chord because, you know, you got a D, A, B, F sharp. So, you know, it's a very interesting voicing of B dominant seven. 
And you know, this is an E major with an F on the treble. It doesn't make too much sense when it has a minor ninth. It breaks all kinds of quote unquote music theory, classical music theory rules. But these two chords next to each other are super interesting. Not a fan of the resolution. This wasn't like staged by me. I didn't like do a bunch of math. I literally did a bunch of random stuff and I got two chords out of it, which I can totally see turning into kind of like a song, you know, like a trap beat. A trap music has all these chord progressions where the chords, you know, if analyzed by, you know, 18th century standards of harmony, surprise, surprise, don't make sense. So this kind of experimentation with the transpose window is super useful. Transposing from one scale to another is really good. You can take a sad song and make it better. And you know, there's all this popular stuff on YouTube where they take like a Metallica song that's written in minor and turn it into major. So, you know, that could be something you can do and turn into a meme. So yeah, I like this window. And if you know theory, obviously you know that this will open up so many possibilities. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you don't know, I finally have the blog post for the MIDI series up and running. It includes every custom action I covered, all kinds of scales, drum MIDI maps, all kinds of MIDI goodies that I've shown and all kinds of custom actions that I made. Uh, you can go to my blog post and you can download all of them. Let me know if you like them. I also put my Reaper configs there. So all my configuration files, all my menus, all my toolbars, all my actions, all those things. Just, you know, if you want to download it, save your own configurations, you know, it's at your own risk. Like you may not like all the stuff I do, but a lot of people asked for it. So I put it there. It could be a good starting point, you know, for you. And then you can change things to your liking if you want. But again, it's my workflow, you know, but people requested it. So I put it up there. So check the blog post and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.